life if you cannot make an impact? What is life if you will never be remembered for one good thing you have done? What is life if you cannot make a difference? Hello, great people. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to today's episode. I am your girl, Blessing Akan. I am always happy to have this beautiful moment with you. My returning subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you for being part of what I do. God bless you. Are you viewing for the first time? Are you seeing my face for the first time? You are welcome. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Turn on your notification bell for you to be notified when I upload a new episode for you. Thank you. In our last episode, I talked about how to handle long distance relationship. In other words, survivor tips for long distance relationship. Please watch that episode. Today's topic is the first to climb Everest. Today is a story review of a great man who have made a difference in the world. He is referred to as a world changer. The story is from a book titled, You Can Be a World Changer by David C. This book contains 101 stories of great men and women. I love to read stories of great men and women because there's a lot to learn from them. These are people who have made impact in the world. Sir Edmund Hillary is the first man to climb Mount Everest. How did he achieve this success, among others? What is his family background? There's a lot to learn from him. Quickly, I will read through his story. As I read, I comment. Then you and I will learn from the story of Sir Edmund Hillary. The condition atop Mount Everest, the world's highest peak, are among the harshest on planet Earth. She ice cliffs, deadly winds, waist deep snow, bitter cold, limited visibility, and air so thin at 29,028 feet that oxygen masks are required. Harsh conditions, however, were no strange to Edmund Hillary, the first man to reach Everest summit. This first paragraph tells you and I that the road to success is full of so many challenges. It is very rough. But if you are determined, the challenges will mean nothing to you. You will surely get there. As a child, Edmund walked barefoot to school. No matter the weather, his strict parents, who were farmers and beekeepers, believed that every physical disorder was caused by overeating. The cure, therefore, was dieting. Edmund's teacher often told him bluntly that he was physically unfit, thin, weak, and too often sick. You can imagine that. Your parents cannot even provide your shoes and other things for you, yet you incur so many disorders and they accuse you of eating too much. There are parents like that. There are teachers that will never bring out the best in you. Our teachers are supposed to be our mentors. They are supposed to be our second parents. But imagine, Hilary Edmond teachers were telling him that he's so thin, he's so weak, he's too sick. They call him different names. This is so touching. Sometimes, reading at the rate of a book a day, Edmund escaped his harsh family life through adventure stories. Then, at 16, he went skiing for the first time. He not only felt intoxicated by the sight of snow, but upon eaves dropping on a conversation by a group of mountain climbers, he came away from the trip with a decision. I must climb something. Of course, he was scared due to the snow and the conversation by other mountain climbers. But he said to himself, I must climb something. <laughs> I like that. Edmund began to spend all of his time hiking, jogging, and climbing mountains. He broke three ribs in one fall, was galled by a frightened yak during another climb, and suffered infected leash bites massive blisters and frozen nose drips on various climbs 
but he was determined to face and master all of the major mountain climbing goals he set for himself. You know, the goal is for him to climb Mount Everest. He started by jogging, hiking, he broke his, his ribs, he, so he was injured, but he was determined. He set goals for himself because he knows what he wants or what he wanted for himself. In 1953, that goal was Everest. With a native Sherpa from Nepal, Tenzin, Norway, Hillary planned and conquered the ultimate mountain challenge, reaching the summit just seconds before Norway. They celebrated by eating a small mint cake and taking photographs. Edmund left a crucifix on the summit that he had won during the climb. The fact that he, his climb brought him celebrity status surprised Hillary. He still thought of himself as a beekeeper carrying on his parents' business. His first response to fame was to buy a new pair of pants to wear in public. He was invited to give lectures around the world, and he found that he enjoyed this new challenge. He joined an expedition to South Pole in 1958 and became the first person since Scott to reach that destination. He also undertook expedition in search of the mythical, abominable slow man, but concluded that the creature did not exist, although a rare Tibetan blue bell did. Through the years, his wife and three children often joined him on his expeditions. He wrote numerous books about his travel adventure stories, unlike the ones he had enjoyed as a boy. Through his expeditions and books, he inspired countless people to take physical risks and attempt great challenges. After the death of his wife and youngest daughter killed in a plane crash, Edmund began to devote his life to working in hospitals and helping build schools and bridges to improve the lives of the Himalayan people. He was knighted by the Queen of England, not only for his bravery, but also for his humanitarian work. In conclusion, world changers never stop short of reaching their goals in life. The story of Sir Edmund Hillary tells you and I to be very determined. We should be very focused, regardless of our family background, regardless of any challenges in life. If you are determined, definitely you will achieve your goals in life. Wherever you find yourself, make an impact, make a difference. You too can be a world changer. Think about it. Please share this video with friends. See you in our next episode. I love you. Bye.